Hey, what is up guys? Ivan here with GetIvan.com and I'd like to welcome you to my 2019 SEO strategy guide. So let's cover the basics up front here on the only two SEO ranking factors, at least according to me. <laughs> so I would say that if we could reduce SEO down to the lowest possible common denominators, they would be content and engagement. And that's what this whole section is about. Um, you can read these if you like, of course. But let me go ahead and blow this up and just talk straight at you for a few minutes here. So content and engagement, right? So the value that you're bringing to the search engine ranking positions, right? Search engine uh, query results, what have you. Um, and then the way that people interact with that information, how they um, treat that information. If Google is able to discern that its users are getting value out of your results. The algorithm has certain abilities to make connections, correlations based on the actual content namely the text associated with various things, including alt tags and titles for images. And they're supposedly getting better at um, being able to scan images and uh, to tell what's in the image, kind of like Facebook has facial recognition technology. Google is supposedly developing that kind of technology. I'm not really familiar with how advanced or un unadvanced it is, really. And of course, there's a whole other facet to that in video, Google owns YouTube. So there's that too. And there's, uh, there's some belief that uh, it's all kinds of text from email to PDFs to just really anything that has text that that Google it has access to, that they are uh, essentially crawling. And so that's a that's a whole uh, raging debate, you know, but the important thing is what you're putting on the Internet is there is a certain level of discernment from Google and other places, depending on where you're submitting your content, you know, and then more importantly is the discernment of the end user. So Google has an ab the ability to attempt to determine what's going on with a piece of content, right? If it's providing something of value, they're correlating it to other things that they've already determined are of value in the search engine ranking positions. And that's step one. After that, you know, and so with step one, a, a really common way to see that in, in action is through really low competition SERP environments. If I say SERP, by the way, it stands for search engine ranking positions. Okay, so results in a, in a Google search, basically. And this is why it is a really good strategy to target long tail keywords, because oftentimes more complex, longer key phrases, there's not that much competition. There are There may be results because Google is saying, okay, these are the best things we could come up with, but they're not necessarily targeting those more complex searches. And so oftentimes you can create a blog post that has, you know, 10 searches or less. You can create a blog post on a key phrase or keyword um, that has 10 searches or less ish that is on a really, com you know, more complex sort of phrase. And it's not uncommon that you'll rank just by making a post because they need something to put there. And that's why um, it is such a great strategy in local SEO to target cities in all kinds of keywords and services that you're, keywords for the services that you're providing in local, because even if for, for as few people as there are out there who are targeting long tail phrases in a, a number of areas, there's many times fewer people that are targeting those kinds of phrases and specific locations. And so um, very common when I do in the past, when I've done 
um, local SEO, geo targeting or localization, I guess is what they call it, that those pages for the suburbs will oftentimes rank really quickly. Um, it's hard to say, you know, four days a week, two weeks, ranks pretty fast oftentimes because there's very low amount of searches and they don't really have tailored results for those SERPs. So what's the point? My point is that as oversaturated as a lot of people view the internet and view all things digital and especially, you know, search engine results, it's really not true. It's still the wild west. It's still a vastly unexplored, undiscovered terrain. And there's, there's so much opportunity. It's, it's pretty nuts when you really start digging deep. So, um, not digging deep, but when you really start in just investigating period. So just by being aware of the lower competition, more complex opportunities and making content, you have an opportunity to get in on the ground floor for something that Google needs results for. So again, what does that mean? That means just by blogging, you can participate in SEO. And that is why um, people from Google in the past, can't remember the guy's name, Matt something or other. Um, he used to talk about, I don't think he works for Google anymore, but he used to talk, he used to do a lot of videos for Google. And he used to talk all the time about doing SEO just with content. And this is the reason why, um, because there's unexplored territory and Google still needs quality content. It's the number one thing that Google needs. So because content is what keeps people coming back, right? Keeps people churning through in Google. But anyways, the second point would be engagement. So once people have found a piece of content that is of some sort of value, right? Then Google is looking at what they're doing with it. So whenever somebody clicks through a search engine ranking position result, a SERP result. So when they're doing, when you do a search on old leather shoes or whatever, right? And you, you click on the first result, for example, excuse me, Google, uh, is tracking then from that point on. If you ever try to right click a link in the SERPs and copy the link and then paste it somewhere, you'll notice that it's not a link to the website that you were just looking at. It is a complex tracking link that Google has created and they in, you know embed that website or whatever through that tracking link. Um, so, uh, Anyone that is clicking through on results in Google, Google is immediately looking at what they are doing after that. And uh, this is not something that uh, my clients think about, you know, that Google actually cares and gauges what their users are doing. And that's a big part of how they determine um, what's going on with uh, the quality of, of a SERP result. So when you think about this, it's a little bit esoteric, but if you're going to develop a search engine, how would you go about, you know, you, your goal would be to provide absolute answers, I suppose, to varieties of questions and queries. And so who can say how Google and their team has gone about that process over the years? Um, and I can only speculate, really. I can probably make some pretty good educated guesses, I guess you could say. Uh, on how that went about. But w when you really think about it, it can only be approached from either that we're starting from an absolute standard and everything that we establish from this point on is based on these absolutes, or we can't determine what those absolutes are. Therefore, we are relying on what the users are telling us is uh, relevant. So it's hard to say in the, from the standard, from the standpoint of the standard, because I do know that it is pretty common knowledge because of uh, the fact that you can go into uh, public records and look at uh, patents from Google and see some of the processes that they're, they've patented for their system. So you can kind of see 
uh, a little bit of what's underneath the hood and how it works. Um, one of the commonly known things is that Google uses high authority websites as a standard for sort of determining the value of other things and it supposedly spirals downward and they it's been believed for years that they use things like Wikipedia, CNN, um, and other, you know, probably Smithsonian, uh, British Science Muse British Science Academy, all those kinds of, you know, high authority, you know, uh, academia type, Harvard academia type brands, um, and social signals and things like that. And so there is a little bit of risk involved in there, you know, but again, it's speculative. We could talk about that for hours. Um, but we do know that trending topics is a major thing. Google is in competition with places like Facebook, which are totally based on social trends. And if you take a look at Google News, for example, you will see that's a pretty obvious example of, of current event trends. We don't regular current events and trends and things like that. We don't regularly perceive that because most search engine results are not so quick, you know, but if you do a search on anything relatively current, you will notice that the top results will be from oftentimes news companies and they'll say published 30 minutes ago, published five hours ago, so on and so forth. So the idea that it takes six months to a year to rank for something is really just an industry mantra. In truth, you can rank for something very, very quickly because Google's algorithm is designed to be able to adapt to things that are trending and current. And so things can rank very quickly. And then of course, it depends on the level of engagement on the thing in question. So a lot of companies and clients, they come to SEO people and they're looking for essentially, whether they want to admit it or not, even white hat folks, they're looking for a gimmick. They're looking for a trick. And unfortunately, the only way to really substantially influence things that way is to have virally vi uh, content that it is has viral potential. That's the only way it's the only way it's only discussed typically in social media standpoint, right from a social media standpoint or social, uh, or, you know, ads, uh, Facebook ads, for example, uh, piggybacking on viral content is a common method. But it, the same applies in SEO. And what can, you know, so a part of it is misunderstanding between the potential customer for SEO and the people who are familiar with how it really works. Um, so what does that mean for your average local business or your e-commerce person or your authority blogger? Well, it doesn't mean that you need to approach everything from a viral media standpoint. Obviously, that doesn't make a sense for sense for a lot of businesses like just some local business. But what I want to communicate to everybody is that it does mean that your content has to have engagement potential for the audience that you're targeting. And if it doesn't, then you're wasting your time with marketing in general. doesn't matter if you're doing SEO or if you're doing SMM, you know, if you're doing email marketing, it doesn't matter what kind of marketing it is. You have to have something of value that is targeting something of interest. Those are two different things, by the way. And then it has to be targeting the right kind of person who will find that interesting. And a, a large percentage, the majority, the vast majority of the clients I consult don't have their sort of business infrastructure figured out to even promote it properly. And that's not to say that, you know, businesses aren't in business. It's just that from a standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, they don't have that infrastructure and they definitely don't have that infrastructure on their website on page, you know, 
And so that's a part of why this consultation exists to, to try to connect these dots for business owners and get business owners to understand the importance of their copy, their conversion potential, the, the sales process that they're leading their potential customer down to even just to think about, okay, who is our most ideal customer that we should be targeting on page? You know, excuse me. Establishing that makes it a hundred times easier or 10 times easier, a large multiplier easier to do any kind of marketing. You know what I'm saying? And so once you have that established, then engagement is simply about promoting it to your traffic source. You can, you can build through a trickle of traffic so slowly over time. Well, the, the speed depends on how much you're blogging, but if you're targeting a lot of long tail posts, then you can blog a whole lot and you can build on that small traffic trickle, right? And then Google will re reward you based on the engagement level if you're just purely focusing on content. And that's oftentimes why I suggest that for my clients because 99% of my clients don't have content. Um, as you're building content though, you need to promote it simultaneously. And so this is a, another area where even SEO people kind of feel like dirty, you know, like they're betraying the field because it feels like in, in the years that I've been involved in it, it's, it's like you need to have content and then you need to build backlinks. Um, but backlinks are meant to be the, the response from the end users, authority users, to the value. They're not, it's not supposed to be a gimmick. And Google has expressed that pretty clearly, you know. And so if you're spending money and time acquiring links that are just tricks and they're not necessarily from uh, being exposed to traffic that is going to give you a conversion potential, then it's a waste of money. And you can sit down and do the math, take a look at average prices that people are putting out there. And when you compare it to other promotional methods, I think you will agree that link building for the sake of link building is a waste of time. And so <laughs> I know I, there's probably some SEO person out there who just flipped a table, you know, like, but uh, it's, it's a response. It's not a promotional activity, you know, and there are other ranking factors, you know, like I was saying earlier, Google tracking those people, you know, as soon as they click on a result, they measure click throughs. And there are public case studies done by companies like Moz and I'm sure some others that have demonstrated that click through rate is a ranking factor. Um, bounce rate is a ranking, fa ranking factor. The bounce rate is the percentage of time um, before that a, that a potential customer stays on your site before clicking off or leaving or whatever. Um, the level just, there's a variety of things that they're measuring to determine engagement level, sig you know, significance for that page. And they're also measuring the general traffic footprint. They're measuring, you know, if you've got Google Analytics on your site, they're measuring direct visits. I've done consultations for companies that were successful in offline marketing that did, I did a consultation once for a fitness company that had been building their business through trade shows, you know, through these expos that, that they go to, they spend 500 bucks on a booth or whatever, and they sell t-shirts and they sell products and they shake hands. And so I've done consultations for companies like this that are ranking for things, but their link profile is little to none. Right. And so when you encounter things like that for a very, and you know, I get the objection all the time from clients, you know, look at my competitor and my, and my client is, my client or potential client is so upset because I have a competitor who has a potato for a website. Right. But they're getting their ranking and they have little to no link profile oftentimes. And the client is bewildered. Sometimes it has to do with content, unique content approach. Uh, and other times it has to do with there's traffic coming in here 
there's an offline marketing footprint. Google is clearly looking at that too. And I've had multiple clients who've been in that situation um, where, where it seems like referral traffic and click-throughs from other places uh, are contributing to a website's rankings. And so it's more important to be focused on your value and if that value is prepared to bring any kind of significant engagement from your potential customer. Okay. And so email, mar you know, in terms of promotions, email marketing, paid ads, PPC, you know, uh, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, right? Press releases generate real click through traffic, you know, participation on other high traffic sources like Quora or Medium or building your local directory for Yelp or Google Maps or, or whatever. There are other things you can do participating in other capacities out there and other traffic sources to bring in to in, well to promote your business. And as you promote your business and bring in real traffic, Google is looking at that. Okay, so that is my approach to SEO. I've dabbled in the, the darker side, the gray to the black hat and things like that and seen results, but it can be hit and miss. You can have a great thing happen and then something can completely fall on its face. It is way more exhausting, way more work, way more loss of money to try to game the system than it is to simply focus on building your brand. And that is why that is what I promote content and engagement to my uh, clients and my peers, because it is so much uh, is a much more enjoyable process to build a brand rather than to constantly be looking for tricks, you know, and that's how it really should be. And when you take a look at the biggest players in almost any space, what are they? They're blogs. <laughs> They're massive blogs with people just writing about stuff all the time. And that's something that was kind of embarrassing for me um, a couple of years ago or so now when I was doing uh, manual outreach. I tried at one point to reach out to other SEO companies and also um, PR companies. And it's really interesting because the SEO companies were typically real stern, jerky men and jer jerks, men who were jerks, right? And you could never do any kind of relationship with them because they were always real skeevy. Not always, but oftentimes, much of the time. And then the PR companies were really bright, bubbly, nice ladies, girls, usually young girls. And it was, I learned something about that side of the industry. You know, what they were doing was they were just doing blogging retainers for companies. And the, some of these PR companies that I made, you know, contact with in the past, they had retainers for uh, all kinds of companies just blogging. And so it was really interesting to see that the authoritative assets that I wanted to make connections with oftentimes were under the auspice of PR companies just, just blogging. And so I have so many stories and so many interesting little things I could share, but I appreciate you guys listening. Then the, the, the thing I want you to take away again is it's about building a brand. And I hope that I can help you and encourage you in best practices or better practices or missing practices for whatever you're involved in. So thank you for watching guys and I'll catch you sooner or later.